another bumper weekend of club action and joined by Conor McKenna, a freelance sports journalist, to discuss it. Um, firstly, focusing on the Westmead Hurling final, and then um, we'll move on to the Dairy Football final with a lot more um, club championship podcasts to come this week. So make sure to watch them. Um, but talking about the Westmead Hurling final, uh, Clonkill and Castletown Gagan, you're obviously a Westmead man. Um, Connor, what's the general consensus about this? Westmead Hurling final in Westmead uh, this week. Yeah, Paul, it's um, it's a tricky one to call the Westmead Hurling final. I think it's it's certainly the two best teams in the county. That's the the first consensus. Um, Clonkill are going for three championships in a row. Castletown won. They won in 2017 before Clonkill started their dominance. It's, it's a repeat of last year's final. Clonkill won that game by three points. Realistically, they were by far the better team that day. They should have been. But they were outside at half-time. They were eight points up at half-time after being completely on top of the first half. Castletown made a bit of a late surge, but Clonkill never looked like losing that game. So they've won two finals the year before. They overcame Raharney. They've been against the odds on both occasions to win both of those finals. Um, they were the, the bookmakers would have had Raharney and Castletown favourites in 2018 and 2019, respectively. But Clonkill have, have um, they've deservedly won the last two championships and, and they'll have a fancy of making a three in a row come Sunday evening. And is there a small bit of a shock that Raharney aren't there with all their talent? Well, see, Raharney would have been probably favourites to win the last two championships. And then this year, Kitty Doyle, I think, is over is abroad at the moment. He's one of the best herders in the county, if not greater afield. And Paul Greville was one of the great stalwarts for years. He's a fabulous herder. But he transferred to a club team in Tyrone and to play football for Derry Trest there. But I think he's he's moved to Tyrone permanently. So... So those two lads would be a loss to any team, any club team in Ireland. I say if those lads were in a Ballyhale Shamrocks team, they retired to be a loss. So to be fair to Raharney, those lads were missing, and that's kind of why they didn't make the, the knockout stages. But they were very unlucky not to beat Castle Pollard in the last group game and get to a semi final. But Raharney will be will be annoyed that they didn't get there. They were favourites going in, in 2017 and 2018, and they lost both of those games. Castle Gagan completely upset the odds in 2017. and. They bet them fairly well. Two points was the full-time score, but Castletown were ahead the whole match and only a late Raharney goal added loss to that. And then it was a very tight final between Clonkill and Raharney in 2018. And then last year, Raharney won their four group games and Clonkill bet them then in the semi-final. So it's all um, all to play for this weekend, um, Paul. Both sides, uh, Clonkill overcame Lachlan Gales. They were very, very narrow narrow winners over over Lachlan Gales in the, in the semi-final. Lachlan Gales looked like they might cause a shock there. They... They've lost six semi-finals in a row now, but Clonkill just got over the line their experience. But they're a good team. They have good lads, great hurlers all around the park, Clonkill do. And they just had that bit of experience that day against them, um, Lachlan Gales. And then Castletown Gagan hammered them. Castle Pollard it was 4-16 to 3-10, but it was 4-16 to 1-10 going into injury time. And Castle Pollard got two late goals. So Castletown, it was a similar enough to 2018, nearly identical actually, because Castletown bet Lachlan Gales by 15 points in 2018. The semi-final, it was 2-22 to 1-10. And Clonkill defeated Raharney by three points and they defeated Lachlan Gales by four points this year. So last year's final, the pathway into it was nearly identical in the second, but 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 um it probably the lack of a of a real challenge in the semi final probably cost Castletown last year. Lachlan Gales just had one of those days when everything didn't go right for them, and Castletown had one of those days when everything they touched turned to gold. So Castletown were very, very impressive against Castle Pollard in the semi final, while Clonkill really had to had to dig deep to get the win. So both sides will be Will be are coming into the final on merit. They've won both teams topped their group. They won their two group games and they both won a semi final. So it promises to be an intriguing encounter this weekend. Yeah, and I suppose looking at the Castletown team, they'll obviously be looking to Liam Verley and Shane Clavin. But like a player for West Mead who had a terrific league campaign, and it probably is one of the most underrated earlier, uh, Angus Clark. Well, a- Angus is an absolute joy to watch him. Well, he's a, he's a super hurler. He's great anticipation. Great man to score. He can be reads the game very well, very, very, very well. So he's a very, very, very good hurler and, and very, very consistent as well. So he's really, really a truly exceptional hurler that Westmead have at the moment. I think he's the best hurler in the county at the moment. So stopping him will be key to Clonkill's chances. And Niall O'Brien is playing for Castletown. Well, he's another another super hurler as well, Niall O'Brien is. So Castletown certainly have had. I think Shane Clavin is injured at the weekend, but Liam Vardy is a very good hurler and they have they have very, very good hurlers all around the park. And Clonkill are likewise, though. Clonkill have very, very good hurlers too. Like Brendan Murtha is one of the best hurlers ever seen in Westmead, if not the best. I think he was ranked number two in the list the Irish Independent did um, their 
uh, during the lockdown season and he was number two and I think number one was Dave Kilcoyne Westmead's only ever hurling all-star but Brendan Murtha was very very unlucky not to get nominated for an all-star in um, in hurling at one stage in his career I think one story that dis- defines Brendan Murtha's career the best is in 2008 Kilkenny had won three in a row they had absolutely obliterated Waterford in the Ireland final that year and there was a railway cup team and there was six forwards on the team five Kilkenny hurlers and Brendan Murtha and Brendan Murtha didn't look out of place and I think that's one thing that will that that that's the best way to describe how good a hurler Brendan Murtha is he wouldn't have looked placed in any team in Ireland I think last year even Con Gill played Baddy Hill Shamrocks and it, they kept him to within 10 points and Brendan Murtha was exceptional that day against a very very good Baddy Hill team arguably the greatest club team ever to grace the earth and then if you look at 2019 and 2018 finals Brendan Murtha has been man of the match both of those days so he's really a, a truly fantastic hurler and himself and Angus Clark you're looking at two two of the best hurlers West Mead have ever produced um, ever um, um, Paul and yeah you mentioned Brendan Murtha there and it would make you wonder the question do you think there'll be any chance of him going West Mead this year the way the season is no, I think he's been asked to reconsider his retirement a few times and I don't see it. Unfortunately, I'd love to say I do see him playing for Westmead. He's actually a selector on the team at Paul's moment, so he's in the backroom team. But no, I, I think that, 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 that day is probably done. Yeah, and then probably other players for Tom Gill, Niall Mitchell, Darry Gitty and Owen Price. But I suppose mainly up front, they're probably going to be looking at Mitchell and Merta to probably get them over the line. Yeah, I think Niall Mitchell is actually injured as well for the weekend, so he's a big loss along with Shane Clapp. But one hurler who deserves huge mention is, is Paddy Dowdle. He's he's now won 13 county medals. He won a championship at Lomond this weekend. I think he's going for 14 this weekend. And he's he's a super talent. He was probably, he was arguably man of the match in the Westmead football final last weekend. I think John Heslin got the official award deservedly. But it, Paddy Dowdle was outstanding for Lomans in the defence. And he's just, he's a super player. He's a real role model of an athlete. like And, and he really dedicates his life to the GEA. He's a super Super, super gay, and he's really one of Westmead's. Like in terms of very, very few people nationwide, never mind in Westmead, have won double digits in, in in terms of county medals, and he's he's really, really on course to break all sorts of records. But he's another very, very good hurler as well. Is Paddy Dowdle. So there's talent across the pitch in both these teams. And um, Luke Lachlan is a great jewel there, and he 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 was very good against Lachlan Gales in the semi final. So like it's very, very hard to call this game. Like it re- really is fifty fifty two two. Two of the best, well, the two best teams in Westmead. There's no argument about it. They, they've been in two finals now, and it should, it should be a very, very good game for them. And Connor, like, where, where do you think is going to be the winner of this final uh, this weekend? I think if Angus Clark can get in and dominate the game, it'll be very. Castletown would have a great chance to win. I think if Clonkill can stop Angus Clark, they'll have a great chance to win. I think Brendan Murtha, likewise, like if, if he get, if he performs to his best, Clonkill would probably win the game. And if Castletown can can curtail his influence in the game, they have a great chance. So I think those lads will will, will bear a huge part in the game. But like Clonkill have they could that's not to say either side is a one man team. Nile O'Brien is an exceptional hurler. Liam Barley is an exceptional hurler as I mentioned. Like Castown are some very good defenders, other other players as well. And and Clonkill likewise only Price is a great hurler. Paddy Dowdle is a great hurler. Luke Lachlan is a great hurler. Like so I think that if you're looking at it it'll probably be who can curtail the other team's star players. But that's probably the same in any game you can keep the start there is quite, and I think it's the same here. Castletown like to play with a short pass and play out with defence, and then look for the forwards in space. Well, like so, that, that that's a key part of their plan, and they do it very, very well. But yeah, I think that keeping the other team stars quiet could be what what could um what could what could define this game. Yeah, and would you feel like the as you were mentioning there that Niall Mitchell could be out of injury? Could he be the difference, really, like to lose a player of his calibre coming into a county final? Well, I think Shane Clavin is also missing for Castletown. So the two of those lads probably balance each other out. The two of them are very, very, very good hurlers. And Clavin is a big, big fella around midfield, wins the ball, can score, catch it. So he's a he's a big loss. Niall Mitch is the same, the big man as well. And he can score, catch the ball and, and, and get on, influence the game. So both of those lads. Dara Egerton is a player who could, who could influence the game. He's a very, very good man marker. I think he... He stuck to TJ Reid, but the TJ Reid or Colin Fenley, one of those Bally Hay lads. And when Westmead beat Kerry in 2019 league final, he was curtailed with the task of marking Shane Conway, which he did very, very well. So Dara Egerton is another very good hurler. So there's talent all around the pitch, and like these two sides are, are certainly there in merit. So Niall Mitchell and Shane Clavendor are both um, massive losses for, for Ed Clonkin and Castle respectively. Yeah, and if you're to call it now, who do you think's going to win it this year? 
it's very hard to call. I'd say this could be one of those games that go to the penalties. They've probably went for Clonkill uh, before the match in the Westmead Examiner. And I, I wouldn't like to change horses before the race, but it's very 50-50. And I couldn't, I couldn't really call it, Paul, to be honest. I think a, a draw is very, very likely with, with extra time and penalties back. And they've probably gone against Clonkill in the past. And they've always nearly seen to spur. So I, I, I think I'll go with Clonkill if I was absolutely pushed. But I, th- I think it'll be very, very close. And it, it's hard. It's, it's impossible to call it. I, I'd say... A lot of factors that will determine the outcome of this game, and I, I'd say I'd say a draw of penalties, and it'll be very very close. But it, it'll be a cracker. It, it'll be well worth them. Any neutrals who are looking for a good hurling game, this will be the one to go. It's a bit like the old Kenny Tipperary days in the past, especially when you consider the respective managers with Pat O'Brien and Pat O'Toole. It's nearly like Brian Cody and, and Liam Sheedy against each other in in terms of Westmead hurling. Those lads have been around the block for years, coaching teams, and they've both done outstanding work in the underage and adult development in both clubs. And Pat O'Toole was manager at Clonkill when they won the All-Ireland Intermediate Championship in 2008. They bet Tommy Larkins in Galway in the All-Ireland final. And that was probably the sing- the most single greatest achievement for any club team in Western history to win the All-Ireland Intermediate title. So the two of those lads are really experienced managers. Pat O'Brien was managing Castletown Gagan when they won the championship in 2013. So they're both very experienced, very good managers. And they promised to be a cracking game at the weekend. And it's, it's impossible to call Paul, to be honest with you. And yeah, just while we're talking about Westmead, like retain their status there in the league, like there must be a bit of confidence heading in now to the Joe McDonough Cup um, in, for Westmead early. Well, Killian Doyle, I think, is, is absent, and he's a massive loss for Westmead if he's not playing. Like, he's, he's a brilliant hurler, he is, and he can score from distance, he gets on the ball, and he can dictate the terms of the game. So, Westmead, though. I think Niall O'Brien could be back. He's playing for Castle on the weekend. He'd be a super player to get back. He's a very, very, very good hurler as well. So I think that for Westmead and the Joe McDonough, it's open. Shane O'Brien's in there. He's, he's a very good manager. Like So I think Westmead, if they can get everyone fish and on their day, they have a good chance if they can get to a Joe McDonough final. They've lost two in a row. This is their third time lucky, but hopefully for Westmead, it'll be third time lucky. But it, it's very hard to know what stage they're at, Paul. I think the fact that the league is suspended, they were going well after the Carlo match. I suppose it was probably a bad time for the action to stop, but obviously there was total justification for the games being being postponed with the with the whole pandemic. Only anyone minded games not being on. But but I think it, 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 to be honest, Paul, it's nearly impossible to know how teams are going to go because there hasn't really been only been back training a few weeks ago and very few challenge games or anything. So I, I think it, it's it's hard to know what level they're at. But I think Westmead, with the fact they've lost two Joe McDonough finals, anything else would probably be constituted as a bad championship because. They, I suppose they have consolidated their place in Division 1 of the league, which is probably the most important thing, but the championship is there, then they have to win it. So I think they have to go. It'd be great to get to a Joe McDonough final for a team this year, being on the under card of an All-Ireland Senior Hurling final. But I think Westmead will, anything else other than winning the Joe McDonough would probably be a bad championship campaign for Westmead this year. Yeah, and I suppose uh, looking ahead to the Derry final, um, for a man who's been a plenty of action in Derry this year, I don't know how you're going this weekend, but um, Slough Neil coming up against Maher Felt, um, but like looking at that performance the last day by Slough Neil, you were predicting it to be a close one, but it didn't turn out anything like that. Slough Neil 3.15, Pat and Derry 1.5. Well, Slough Neil were, were very, very good at the weekend, though I'm not going to again, they'll be at the Westmead hurling final, but, but Slough Neil were, were very, very good, and I think that they kind of got on top of Ballon Derry early, and Ballanderry had to kind of come out with their shell and attack Slot Neil, and I think Slot Neil kind of put them away then after that. So I think Slot Neil did everything right for them to produce a very, very good performance against Ballanderry. But Mahara Felt then overcame the loop in their semi final, and that was a great win for Mahara Felt. They've had three games now against Lavi, Swatra, and the loop, and they've had narrow wins. They bet Lavi by two points, bet Swatra by four points, and they bet the loop now by a single point at the weekend. But all those teams are good teams, and they've had those three games were in the, in the knockout stages. But, but, um, but, Mahara felt them. Um, they have good players around the park. I think Oren Lynch in goals is, is a very, very good goalie, and they have two the Heaver and Shane and, and Danny Heaver and Emma McGuckin as well. So it's a very, very, very good um, Mahara felt team. The reigning champions they've got good underage. It's a big, well, it's not a big town, but it's a town with a huge interest in Gaelic football. And they won the championship last year, kind they got to the final. Glen were probably slight favourite, but Mahara felt overcame them, and they have a few. Very, very good footballers all around the park. And they'll come this weekend. The, the three tight games will, will, will have done an awful lot for them. Like Stock Neil, in their knockout games, they've had two very, very big wins and one very, very close game against Glenn. So it's hard to know um, how, it's, how, how how the game is going to pan out. But it, it, that, that will be a very good game of football in Derry this weekend. Yeah, but you just feel like when you're looking at Stock Neil the last day, 
Christopher Bradley and Shane McGuigan, 1-9 out of 315. It's going to be very hard, really, for Maher Velt to tie not one, but the two of them down. Yeah, well, those ads are very, very good forwards, McGuigan especially. And I just think, Slot Neil, there's just so much talent within the ranks. Like, Corey Cassidy's back in midfield, like, Nick McCabe, super footballer. Brendan Rodgers is a super footballer. Like, if you look around the pitch, there's not a weakness in the slot near the team. I wouldn't say they were in transition, but they had a bit of a period there after Mickey Moore and left when they went two years without getting to a county final. Like, but, but um, oh, it's it's, a, it's hard to know how it's going to pan out this weekend. Mahara felt we'll need to take all the time, but Mahara felt haven't really put a foot wrong either all all, all campaign. Like so, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule out a shock here completely, Paul. Yeah, but then you were saying that they're going through transition, but then to bring someone like Gavin Devlin in, but it's. Not just the forwards they have up front. Um, Chrissy McKay, Brendan Rogers, Paul McNeil, Keelan Feeney, they're all the one thing Schlock Neil have, they do have long range shooters who can break these blanket defences down with the and it's just the long range shooting they have. We've seen McGuigan, Rogers, all these boys hit monsters with scores in games. Well, they're just they're they're very, very good at taking their chances and they're very, very good at adapting to whatever the opposition throws at them like so if someone throws a blanket defense they'll take patient and they'll take the long range chance they won't rush a shot if someone goes man to man they'll destroy them with fast forwards and pace in the forward line so i think they're very very good at adapting to what the opposition um bring at them and i think it's not you there's no weak players they have across the team and they're good lads to train they'll give everything and oh, i think they're just a fantastic club an example of a club but mara if i haven't got too many weaknesses either they've a good goalie a very very solid defense a good lads in midfield who can win the kickouts and they have quick forwards too like so I see the odds slot neither one to ten to lift the trophy and Mahara Felder five to one. And I think those odds are probably slightly advanced. Now, having said that, do I think slot neither will win the game? I do think they'll win the game, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be overly shocked if it was a surprise this weekend. Yeah, and I suppose you mentioned there that the adaptability really for slot neither, um that they can break down any system and like if you're Maher Felt, like what way do you set up to approach slot neither this weekend? Well, I think McGuigan was kind of Shane McGuigan when they played Glenn last year. He was kind of well marked, but this year McGuigan, they played Glenn. And he scored seven points in play, like, and he's he's a super footballer. Shane McGuigan, I, I, he's one of the best footballers I've seen this year in the club championship. But he, he's just he's got two good feet. He's got a wand of a left foot. His position is fantastic. He's, he's got speed. He can he can run with the ball. I just think McGuigan is an absolutely wonderful footballer, and I just think that what way would you mark him as right? Like I. I I wouldn't be big into these blanket defences. I prefer to have a go at teams and give yourself the chance to win the match. Like, but I don't know how Mara Fed are going to play. I think Adrian Cushes over them from from Tyrone. Like, so I don't know how they're going to set up. Like, they seem to be a good team at holding on to possession and frustrating opponents and, and being hard to beat and winning matches. Then, so Mara Fed, I, I don't know how they're going to set up at the weekend. But but whatever way they set up, it's it just there's no there's no kind of one way to beat Slot Neil. You'd have to work very very hard for it, like to to get it. And there's no kind of perfect formula to, to winning match against Law Neil, but no, it, it does promise to be a very, very, very good game of football. And it's actually in Balahi this weekend that the match has moved from Celtic Park due to high um, rate of COVID in, in around the, the Derry and, and Straban area. So I think that, that that game is out in Balahi. Will it be much different being in Balahi? Probably not. It'll probably suit both teams from a purely logical point of view because Balahi is, is over in South Derry near the the border with Antrim and Tyrone, but the other way, Mahara felt especially you're going an hour from at least an hour to, to Celtic Park and Slot Neil, you're going nearly the same distance. So I think over in Balahi will suit both teams and their supporters from, from a logical point of view. But it, it's hard to know how it's going to all pan out this weekend. But I'd say it'll be a good game, and I'd probably expect Slot Neil just about come out on top. Yeah, and over the last few years, um, just listening to a few different things this week from both camps and uh, previous shows. There seems to be a bit of a needle between both of these sides. Well, I'm not aware of that or any needle, to be honest with you, but I, I don't know how the how the scene works there. But I, I don't want to get, hopefully it won't be too bad and it'll be a nice clean game of football on Sunday. Yeah, and I suppose looking at how Meherfeld can win the next day, Conor Curran's man had matched the last day, kicking two points. But M. McGuckin, such a target man at the edge of the square, he's going to be vital, really. But Probably going to be man marshalled probably by McGuigan or Rogers, you'd imagine. Yeah, well, it's it supposed to slot me and management, Paul Bradley and, and Gavin Devlin will be looking at that this week, how to match up. But Mickey Moran was over them for years and he was always a great man to, to get tactics right in the big day as well. So 
Yeah, I suppose stopping and curtailing the influence of the other team's key forwards is, is always going to be a key to winning a game, any big game. But the slot needed were very good against Glenn and they had everything right that day. They really got their game plan right. There wasn't luck. They probably could have won that game by a small bit more. But Glenn are a very, very good team. So, yeah, I'm sure slot needed will have their homework done a matter of felt. And likewise, and I'd say both teams, if whoever loses, it won't be for the lack of preparation in a way. Exactly. And I suppose a massive positive uh, for Derry football. Um, last week um, of AFL's Derek Conor Glass returning uh, too late for the Glen Championship but probably a possibility for Derry for this year's Championship because we've already seen Conor McKenna as part of the Tyrone panel. Yeah, well, I just don't know how it's going to work with the quarantine um, Paul, though, because I don't know is he, when is he home or is he planning to stay over there for a few more weeks or what the story is but whenever Glass is returned to the Derry panel it'll be a huge addition. He's a he's a super, super footballer is Conor Glass and He'd be a massive addition to Derry. But I think Derry are probably one of the sleeping giants of the GEA. I think because like the, if you look at the standard of club football, it's 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 an excellent standard of football it is. And if you look at the interest, okay, the interest in the city probably is, isn't as strong as it could be. But County Derry, the interest is absolutely massive like it is. And there's a real appetite for football. And also they have tradition. So they have tradition, they have interest, they have footballers. like So they have the ingredients to be a super, super powerhouse of Gaelic football like but they're not a powerhouse of Gaelic football they were in division four okay they came out of it but they're looks like they're going to be in division three again next year but Derry have the potential to be a very very good team like if you look at the club seeds Lot Neil won three other championships and they didn't even get to the last two finals like so I just think Derry football it, it, there's 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 huge huge potential there for them to improve and be be a big game um, football powerhouse Absolutely, I suppose it'll be interesting to see now how they get on this year with uh, the knockout format, but um, thanks a million for your time, Conor McKenna.